Okay, so um, I hope you can hear me okay. I am sitting outside in the midst of this uh, global pandemic we have going on with SARS-CoV-2. So I felt, um, maybe not felt, that I wanted to sort of do these short lecture videos on immunology and virology because um, I have a lot of friends and family who just are asking lots of questions, which is awesome. Um, but maybe this will be a nice, um, concise, and to the point way of learning some of these basics, um, considering everything that's going on. And so just um, sort of about me and some disclaimers, I am in no way a medical professional. I don't claim to be a medical professional. None of this should inform you explicitly on how to treat yourself in any way. Um, so as always, go see a doctor if you don't feel well. Um, what this is though, is it is meant to be um, this sort of outlet where I can tell you guys about what I know and what I'm learning and um, and hopefully that sort of allows you to ask questions or maybe to evaluate the information that you're given. And um, I'm not making any money from this. And again, yeah, I'm not a medical professional, so don't take any advice. Uh, I won't give any, but um, I wouldn't take any medical advice from anybody aside from your doctor. Um, so about me, um, I'm a huge Resident Evil fan first of all, but I did my undergraduate studies at the um, University of Arizona, and I studied psychology, and I had a minor in microbiology, and I'd say about halfway through my degree, I realized that I should have been studying molecular and microbiology the entire time. Um, so with that said, I took as many courses as I could in the microbiology um, department, and pretty much was on par to graduate with the double bachelors, but it would have taken me a few more, and I just wasn't interested in doing that at the time. Um, these are just some of the things I did in undergrad. Um, and so after graduation, I worked as a molecular technician for the Arnold Lab. This is a fungal mycology lab where I learned some of the basics um, of, of just doing science in general. And um, greatly appreciative to uh, Dr. Elizabeth Arnold for everything she did to um, sort of introduce me to this and to help me get into uh, my degree program, which I'm in now, which is um, at the University of Arizona. I'm studying in the immunobiology department. And so my PhD, I guess, technically will be in, um, when I finish, will be in cellular molecular medicine and with an emphasis in immunobiology. So I'm coming up on the end of my first year. And so I am still in training. I don't claim to be an expert in anything at all. And this is just on, on you know, something I'm doing on my own. I don't represent the University of Arizona in any official capacity. So what I wanted to do is just sort of outline what to expect from this and why I'm doing it. Um, I love to talk about immunology and virology, and I want others to be able to sort of understand some of the basics of um, these concepts so that when they hear something on the news, they can sort of make their own judgment about that. Um, I want to improve on my ability to communicate science um, to people who don't necessarily study science. And so this won't be an in-depth molecular mechanistic type of um, lecture that I give in the future. I'll do that when necessary. I'll try to make it as easy to understand as possible when, I, when, when it's required. Um, and so you can read this here, but this is just me saying that I want people to watch these and sort of learn the principles and then be able to make their own decisions based on that. Um, like, for example, our understanding of gravity, it may not be perfect, um, but it's probably not going to change ever in our lifetime. Um, and it won't really change the way that we deal with things on a daily basis. And so some of these basic principles of chemistry, biology, physics, these are things at the very fundamental level which are not going to change um, for the most part. And so when we do experiments, when we do science, and we base our we base our conclusions off these fundamental laws, um, we can be pretty sure, um, especially when they continue to um, be correct, um, that these are truths in some sense. And so you should be able to learn these basics and then be able to evaluate information that you're given. Um, this is the first time I've ever tried this, and so it may not be perfect, but I'm planning to keep these short lectures, um, five to 15 minutes long, vary as needed. And um, the information is going to come primarily from these three resources. I think they're great books. I have all three. You can find them on Amazon. I've included the ISBN numbers that way you can track them down. 
and uh, um, if needed, I'll add primary literature, which is basically um, primary literature is like when people talk about scientists did a study. That's the study. It's not. Um, it's not the media telling you. It's not some um, secondhand source. It is the primary source of who did that inf that experiment and came up with that information. And so, um, to me, that's like the gold standard. But um, yeah, and so if you have questions or suggestions or I don't care hate mail go ahead you can send it to Ian underscore Klein at yahoo.com and I will check that and I thought this quote sort of encapsulates what I I really agree with this I don't know if Neil actually said it but um, to be scientifically literate is to empower yourself to know when somebody else is full of bullshit All right, and so um, the overview of sort of the topics that I want to discuss here, um, starting with molecular biology. This will be just a short review of things, um, sort of what are the domains of life and viruses and how do they fall into that scheme. A cellular roadmap, just talking about the um, structure and components of cells. Transcription translation, which I think are really important to be able to understand any of this. Um, genome replication, equally important, and you know whatever else I come across that I think is important. Um, in the chemistry and biochemistry area, this will be an even shorter, just a brief overview of like water elements, everything's not bad. Like, you know, yeah, you don't want to consume lead, but just because there's a lead atom on something doesn't mean it's a bad uh, molecule. So we'll go over that. Acid-base chemistry, um, just sort of an understanding of how pH works, because that sort of gets tossed around a lot too, especially in nutritional um, sciences and people talking about pH balanced water, which is bogus, um, and then metabolism because you need to understand at least a little bit of metabolism to understand why viruses need a cell. And as far as the immunology side of things goes, oh, I can't see this on my screen here. Oh, well. Um, I think I put on there that just sort of an overview of the um, immune system and then the cells involved and the tissues involved in the immune system. And then for virology, um, just again, an overview of um, viruses, what are they, um, why do they make us sick, and then getting more into um, what the virus actually brings with it and what they're made up of as far as their genome composition. And then integrating the two um, to understand uh, how viruses overcome barriers that they need to, um, to get past to infect a cell or even a host rather, and then um, sort of the interplay of how a host cell recognizes a virus. Um, so that's really the interesting area, I think, when you get that interplay between how do you integrate these two topics. Um, that's just in, for legal reasons, references. Um, so yeah, that's it for now. I will try to, um, I'll try to post these as often as I can and it'll be um, relatively short and starting with those topics first. So I look forward to, even if it's just talking to myself, getting to do this.